So I had the unfortunate mishap of accidentally damaging these four or five cables. So rather than ordering a new one or uh, waiting for one to arrive or purchasing a new one, I thought, hey, I might as well go ahead and repair this. This is a, about an 11 or 12 year old ribbon cable. Um, I think they're still readily available, uh, but again, uh, I'm not going to sit there and waste time when I can fix it myself. So the first thing that I need to do is I need to locate some wire that has the approximate same gauge as the uh, one that I'm replacing. Um, I have, this is an old HP printer, so I went ahead and just used uh, the wires from this, just recycled them. So after determining what the length was, I went ahead and cut it a little bit longer than what I need just so I have some extra play. And then I need to take this external housing off this connector. This connection right here that I'm taking off is, uh, has two purposes. One, it relieves stress, so if that cable is being pulled, it doesn't directly uh, pull on the pin. It, instead, it pulls on the uh, external housing. The second purpose, of course, is, uh, as you see the latches on the two edges, is to latch that connector straight to the uh, system board or the circuit board. So after that's been removed, I need to actually um, take off one more housing and that is the very top and this housing is special because it uh, not only is grooved specifically for each pin but this housing actually pushes down on the wires into the metal grooves that I'll show later to make sure that that connection is as solid as possible so I'm gonna mark it on the left hand side so I know where the black went this cable isn't um, complicated it's just a straight through but again I just want to make sure that I'm clear so if you take a look at those V's, you can tell that each wire is going through each one of those metal grooves. And the um, object of this, of course, was to pull it off. And you can see those metal grooves in there. And you can see how it went around the wire. So I didn't cut the wire. It just went around the uh, rubber or plastic part of the wire. So I'm going to do the same thing on the other side, taking out the um, external housing and then the internal housing. And you can probably see pretty closely the damage that was caused. Some of these wires are specifically cut so I just need to determine the colors that I need to replace and of course the quantity. Uh, the red one that you see down there was actually eaten to the point where I couldn't even uh, determine a connection from one edge to the other. Since this is a ribbon cable I can basically go in between the line that I need and tear it like if I was tearing a piece of paper. If you have some long nails works perfect. If you don't um, just score it slightly with um, a razor blade or a scissors and then by hand peel the rest of it off. You don't want to use scissors because it's very easy to cut into uh, the other parts of the wire. So you can see that I left this wire on so I gotta take this off and that's exactly what I'm going to do here is just score where I want to cut and then by hand I'll peel it and you can uh, definitely observe the damage that was caused by this and hence why this wire is bad. After these uh, wires are removed from uh, the rest of the cable, the next challenge of course is to install the new wires. And here's again a quick view of the grooves. And I'm going to place the good cable back on the connectors. And the reason I'm doing this first is I don't know exactly which wires I took off since they weren't exactly centered and that's perfectly fine. Uh, this just makes it easier for me and I'll just go one wire at a time. So I'll press down on both sides of those grooves and again you can see where the V groove cuts straight into the plastic part of the wire and it actually touches that inner core. So I'm going to do the same thing on the other side with the wire. Maybe it's the other side of the wire. <laughs> Pushing on both sides, as you can see. And now in the center, those are the wires that were bad. So that's the section that we're going to replace of the ribbon. So I've got one, two, three, four, five, six cables that I need to replace. And this is why the thickness of the wire mattered. If it was too thick, I might cut the wire. If it was too thin, uh, that may work, but then the wire may come loose during use. Also, if it's too thin, of course, if it's high current wire, uh, you could cause some dish issues there. So I put the wire in the middle grooves, and this is why I need a little bit of length. 
and I'm going to use a screwdriver and go back and forth on it. And basically what I'm wanting to do is that V groove to cut the housing and then for the wire to just press right in there. There's a pretty decent close-up shot of exactly what I'm doing. Now when I put that smaller housing that we took off earlier, that'll actually finish the job. It'll crimp the rest of it, if you will. So it's pretty solid in there now. So now I have the remaining wires to go, and I should be set for this side. So one, two, three, four. So all I'm doing here is replacing the rest of the wires. Nothing magic here. It's this exact same process that I just did. Trying, of course, um, press on both sides and get the wires down all the way in the grooves. And the reason why that's important, important to do this now is because if you're putting that small housing on and you didn't align them right, you could end up getting a wire inadvertently cut and exposed and maybe it's touching another pin. So there's the finished left-hand side. As you can see, all five wires were replaced. Uh, nothing terribly magic here. This just takes a little bit of dexterity. So there's that housing I was referring to earlier. And the thing about this housing is make sure you use only your hands. If you use a tool to press on it, um, you really risk cracking the housing, and that would be very bad. So press with your hands through like I did there, and um, that should be fine. On the other side, I'm cutting the five wires, making sure first that I have sufficient length. And then I'll repeat the process where I first put the old ribbon in, and then I'll put one wire at a time, of course verifying the order of the wire. Since again, I'm not crossing wire from one side to the other, it shouldn't be uh, complicated at all, it should be pretty nice. So those are the remaining ones that I need to do. And now I will start. So I've got most of the wires in now. Again, I'm pressing on both sides of that V group, trying to cut the housing, but not the wire. And as you can see, it's pretty clear that uh, it worked well. I'm going to put the small housing on, again, only using my hands to press it in. And I'm going to wrap it around the cable, just like, uh, basically it's the reverse of taking it apart. And I'm going to put that external clip on. Make sure you pull nice and tight with this. If it's uh, too loose, it's not going to do its job really well. And then just clip it right on. Um, what I didn't show you is, you can see that those small white pieces, um, they were a lot longer. I just used a, a, a leading nose pliers on the end of it, it had a cutters, and I just cut the access off. There's no need to have it there, and it looks clean. So there we go. Thank you very much, and have a good one. If you have any questions, feel free to leave me a comment at my website, bucketofmass.com.